So this is the walkthrough for the um, edXL GCC um, Unit 2 Stage 1 June 2008 paper. Okay, as we go along, um, all Matterswatch clips I've already identified and I've written them on the paper in pink. They'll be on the image of the paper as well. So, question one, what is one third times two elevenths? What we need to do here is remember that when you're multiplying fractions, you just multiply across the tops, multiply across the bottoms. So one times two is two, three times 11 is 33. Let's have a look on here. Does that exist? Two over 33. Yes, it does. Sometimes you might now need to simplify before looking for the answer, but that's fine. Okay, next question. So this area is a trapezium. Um, there are two different ways to remember the area of a trapezium formula. Um, the one I quite like is A plus B over 2 times H. Another one is 1 half A plus B H. It's up to you which one you remember. You must remember it for the GCC exam. A and B in both instances are the parallel sides. So here we've got 4 plus 7, which is going to give me 11. 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. 5.5 times 3 is going to give me the answer. Okay, so I'm looking for 5.5 times 3. Well, 5 times 3 is 15. 0 0.5 times 3 is 1.5. So effectively, I'm looking for 15 plus 1.5. It's going to give you my answer, which is my 16.5. Question 3, I just need to simplify here. There isn't a math watch clip for this. Um, we're just collecting like terms. So 6p minus 3p. So that's saying like if we've got six pairs and I take three of them away, you're left with three pairs. So we've got 3p. And then I've got 4q take away 5q, which is going to give me minus q. So let's have a look. Where's that one? Here we go. There's your answer. Question four, factorize 8d minus 2. Factorize, we're thinking brackets. So what I need to do there is single bracket. What goes into both 8d and 2? Well, I can take out a 2. Um, so 2 times what is 8d? It's 4d minus 1. A really good thing to do to check here is just to expand this to check we're correct. 2 times 4d is going to give me 8d. 2 times minus 1 is going to give me minus 2. Okay, so we know it works because we're back to where we started. So we're looking for this one, and that's going to be here. Okay, I'm just going to wipe the screen to see if it makes things a bit clearer. Give me a sec. Does that help? Not really. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, so next. A train ticket to the city centre costs £2.85. Remember, in the exam, you're allowed to take in a highlighter. That's absolutely okay. So a teacher buys 26 of these tickets for a school group. What is the cost of the 26 tickets? So we need to do 2.85 times 26. Now for me, whenever I'm multiplying fractions together, let's try and make it a bit more focus. No. When I'm multiplying fractions, what, uh, decimals, what I personally would do is I'd take out the decimal point. I'd do 285 times 26. So let's do that down here. So I'm going to have 285 times 26. I'm going to use column, use Napier's bones if it's easier, use um, grid method if it's easier. So 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 8 is going to give me 48. 49, 50, 51. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 add 5 is 17. There's my 0. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 8 is 16, add 1 is 17. 2 times 2 is 4, add 1 is 5. Let's add them up. 0, 1, 14, 5, 6, 7. So 285 times 26 is 7,410. We know that's not going to be the final answer. We need to put that decimal point back in. So what I'd say to myself is in that question, how many numbers appear after the decimal point? 1, 2. So we're going to put the same back into our answer. 1, 2, decimal point. Now let's just do a little bit of quick mental arithmetic to check our answer makes sense. What's approximately 3 times 25-ish? 3 times 25 gives us 75. Is that in the right ballpark? Yes, it is. Okay, good. So we want 74 pounds 10, which is going to be here. Okay. All right, next page. 
So bearings, the key point of bearings is this word here, from. P from Q. What that means is we need to draw the north arrow at Q. If it, okay, P from Q. So we're interested in the north arrow at Q. And then three things of bearings. Um, there are always three figures. You read round clockwise, okay, and you start from north. So the bearing of P from Q is 220. That's what they're telling us. That makes sense with what we know. We want to know what is the bearing of Q from P. Now for this, from P is our, is our clue. So we draw the north arrow at P. Now what were those three things? We're going to read around clockwise from north, and it needs to be a three-figure bearing. So this, I'm going to call it X, this is the angle that we're after. Now, do not try and measure this. Look, angle not drawn accurately. What we actually need to do here is a couple of angle facts. So let's first of all work out what this missing, oh, what this missing angle here is. All right? Angles around a point add up to 360. So this angle here is going to be 140. All right? It's not the answer. But it's going to help us. The angle there is 140 because <clears throat> they add up to 360. Now, what this actually now is, is... Um, Angles in parallel lines, north and north, are always going to be parallel with each other. So this would be a co-interior angle. So this plus this is going to make 180. We know that's 140, so x must be 40 degrees. Okay? Except bearings, three figure, 0, 040, oh, there's our answer. Okay? Next, here are the first five terms of an arithmetic sequence. What is the expression in terms of n for the nth term of the sequence? So this is what I would always do. What's the difference between these terms? So 9 to 13, that's going to give me 4. It's 13, 17, I've gone up 4, I've gone up 4, I've gone up 4, right? So the first thing I'm going to write down is a 4. It's asking me for the nth term, so I'm going to write down an n. And then the last thing I do is, what would that term there be? So if I'm adding 4 and I got 9, then we know that must be a 5. Did we say negative 5? No. Nope. So it's positive 5. Okay? 4n plus 5. Next, the lowest common multiple of 8 and 12 is, um, well, let's have a look. First of all, multiples. They are not the numbers that go into them. They're not factors. Let's write out the multiples of 8. 8, 16, 24. Okay, do I need to go any further? Not if I'm being clever. Multiples are 12, 12, 24. Now, if you had gone further, that's not a problem at all, but we're looking for the first time a number appears in both columns. Okay, the first time, so that's going to be 24. I can't get this straight. Here we go. <clears throat> so 24 is our lowest common multiple. Okay, so a train travelled 120 kilometres in one and a half hours. What was the average speed of the train? I would absolutely, if you don't know already, learn your speed distance time triangle. There are a few different ways you can remember it. You can remember it as DST, STD. I tend to remember it that the D goes at the top because it's kind of got the pointy bit at the top like the pointy bit of the triangle. But please learn it however you like. Okay? DST. So what information do we have? We've got the distance that's been given to us. We've got the time. We want to work out the speed. So we cover up speed. is going to be distance divided by time. So my distance is 120 kilometers, and my time is one and a half hours. Do not write that in minutes. You know it's not in minutes because look at these answers. They've all got hours in, so it needs to be something to do with hours. In case it's going to be 1.5. 120 divided by 1.5. So a really nice, easy way to do this, because even this is a non-calculated paper, is all we can say, okay, well, let's count up into 1.5 to get to something sensible, okay? So if I've got 1.5, if I double it, I get to 3. And then if I add on another 1.5, I've got 4.5, and then I get to 6. And now we can be a little bit clever here. So, four, so from here, we can see that 4 times 1.5 was 6. Well, how do I go from 6 to get to 120? Well, I could double it to get to 12 and then times it by 10 to get to 120. So I'm going to take the 4 times 1.5. I'm going to double it. 
which would be an 8. And then I'm going to times it by 10, which is going to take me to 80. Okay, so 80 kilometers per hour. Now, if that didn't make any sense to you, that was just me doing a really quick way of doing 120 divided by 1.5 in my head. An alternative method is to get rid of the, um, the decimal and the fraction. So we can do one times top and bottom by 10. Okay, that gives you 1,200 divided by 15. And then you could do normal bus stop method on that. Or you could just cancel down your fraction. How many fives go into 15? How many fives go into 1,200? Whatever your preferred method for dividing by decimals, okay? It might be worth looking up dividing by decimals on MathWatch if you're not sure. Mine was just a cheap way to do it in my head, but there are definitely four more methods there as well. Okay, question 10. So expanding brackets, there are a few different ways to do this. I tend to prefer FOIL. So first, we're gonna times them together outside, inside last a nice little method i've learned recently is i call the window peanut method so i've got x and i've got a four i've got x and i've got a six okay and i'm just going to times them together x times x is x squared x times four four x x times six six x four times six or six times four twenty four then we've got peanut i've got a peanut here so I've got x squared, I have to add together the 2 in the peanut, and then I've got 24, okay? So I'm going to have x squared plus 10x plus 24. Let's check which one have we got, x squared plus 10x plus 24.